Hey groupies, welcome back to Form of Therapy. I'm the video channel producer, and today we are checking out Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo by Honey Popcorn. A lot of controversy surrounding this group. We'll talk about that after we actually check this out. But before we get into the reaction, I just want to say this video is brought to you by our final Teespring merch sale. This red velvet bad boy design, this soft PD design, it's all going away March 31st. That is next Saturday. So go ahead and get it now while you can. That's teespring.com slash store slash final sale. Get it now. Let's get into the reaction. This is your form of therapy. Okay. Oh. Oh. First of all, so many different vibes. This vibe right here, red velvet vibe. This vibe right here, what is this? A pink lovelies? Uh, one of the generic girl group vibes. Girl with the French. She's super cute. I love it. Oh, I like this part. Oh, wow. The aesthetic is a little bit all over the place. This right here reminds me of the Momoland Kung Chang Kupang music video, but this nature part reminds me of the... And then we've got this whole cosmic thing. You know what? I dig it, though. It's a little all over the place, but I dig it. Oh my god, they're so cute. Oh my god. I'm such a basic bitch. I know this song is generic. I know this chorus is so generic and predictable. But I love it. Typical electronic spatial sounds that you hear in a lot of girl group songs. Oh, that's, I like that. On the water, like the, the lit candles, that's really pretty. Also, this center girl, she's just getting all the screen time, right? I, I don't think I've heard the girl with the short hair, the one with the buns, sing. Seriously, they're not even harmonizing. You'd think they'd at, at, at least harmonize during the chorus. The girls on the sides, they feel more like backup dancers. There we go, okay. I think it's them. The voice sounds a little different. Seriously, she's literally in a different outfit from them. They're clearly like giving her a center syndrome. Oh my god, I love this last design. It, this aesthetic is so cute. This is so adorable. Oh, that blue set reminds me of Lay's music video. That's what it is. Wow. They spent a lot of money on this music video. There's almost... Wow, there's a lot of set changes. not over. I gotta admit, this song, it's a very typical girl group song. It's very generic. Nothing about this is breaking the mold. It's not innovating anything. But goddamn, do I love it. Goddamn, is it catchy? Like I said, I'm the most basic of all bitches. And goddamn, this pure pop sound. It works for me. When it comes to girl groups like these, especially with a generic sound like this, whether I like it or not is just purely just happenstance. It's purely chance, purely coincidental. It's just a little bit based on vocals, a little bit based on visuals. I gotta say, I'm in. 
I am 100% into Honey Popcorn. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding this group, but as mature professionals, we are going to review the music and the video separate and then talk about their extracurricular activities afterwards. So song-wise, like I said, nothing special here, but it is to be commended how much it sounds like a K-pop girl group song. This is a Japanese group. They're all Japanese women. And I'm surprised how much this sounds like K-pop. If I didn't know anything about them, I would think this is a completely Korean song. Their accent, their dialect, their pronunciation is all on point. Their Korean is excellent. And the sound of the song, the whole spatial electronic effect, I mean, this is very like the A-Pink, Lovelies, that sort of girl group sound. And I'm surprised how much they nailed it. I mean, if we were to make a comparison into other countries, uh, making an attempt into the K-pop industry like Chad Future or EXP Edition. Yes, I know comparing those people to Honey Popcorn, these songs are not alike. I'm just going from the perspective of they are foreigners, they are not Korean, and they are debuting in K-pop with zero Korean members and zero actual uh, Korean lived influences. That's the only thing I'm comparing them on. And if you were to compare it, Honey Popcorn does a spectacular job in seamlessly fitting in with the K-pop genre than EXP Edition and Chad Future ever did. It's very jarring listening to a Chad Future song and especially an EXP Edition song because their music sounds very, very American. And they're just putting Korean words over it with, like I said, pretty bad pronunciation. Although to Japan's credit, our language does sound extremely similar phonetically so it can't be too difficult to actually learn that but still but still there is some but still there is something to be said about honey popcorn's debut honey popcorn's bibbidi bobbidi boo in both its concept with its cute cutesy concept it's very 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 much k-pop and what i appreciate is the dancing see here's the thing what americans never got right about k-pop the dancing. Very few artists in America dance anymore. It was a thing a little more back in the 90s and early 2000s, but nowadays it's not really a thing. And it's partially why Beyonce is so highly praised. Beyonce is one of the few pop artists that actually incorporates choreography and very intense choreography into their live stage performances while actually doing music. And very few American artists actually do that. You have maybe someone like Lady Gaga who incorporates slight choreography, but none of that pales in comparison to what Beyonce does. And that same mindset transfers over to K-pop. If you looked at feels like this, I'm sure they had choreography in the live stage, maybe, I hope, but there wasn't any in the music video. And what little dancing they had and showcased, it paled in comparison to what the boy groups here can do. The lack of training, the lack of sharpness, the lack of inventiveness in the choreography was very, very apparent in their debut. But looking at Honey Popcorn's debut, and I didn't tell you that they were Japanese and they weren't trained under the same Korean ecosystem, you would find it easily believable that these were K-pop artists. And that is what I find so engaging. They put in the work, they put in the effort. This is more than just trying to cash grab into the K-pop scene. I can tell that this came from a genuine love of K-pop. And I also know that one of the members fronted her own money to get this music video made. And I believe it's the girl that has the most screen time. I mean, the screen time here is exceptionally unfair, honestly. It might be a Japanese thing, I don't know. I don't follow too many Japanese groups, but Baby Metal is very much like this, where Sue Metal just sings 99% of the song. But honestly, she deserves it if she fronted her own money because both the song production and the music video production here, it paid off, it paid off. Almost to the point where this music video it was, I feel like maybe a little too expensive. Like for a K-pop music video, this is the standard for sure. But I know they're not signed at a huge label. The fact that she had to put up her own money to do this, I can tell, damn, this, this was not cheap. There were a lot of set changes, but this is what sets them apart from a music video like Puldok or Reigns or whatever. Like, I know, like, I'm not trying to insult those groups, but they had so very few set changes and it's completely different, like the standard of K-pop in which the production you have to have to make it seem better and bigger, honestly. And they put up the money to do this and it really showed. Now, of course, we have to talk about the controversy surrounding Honey Popcorn. Now, in most cases, I would never discuss another woman's sexual activities without her present, but it is also 
a job that they had. And if it was any other scenario, any other job, we would still be talking about it the same way. So we're going to treat it as such. Now, I don't like this whole aspect where everyone is pretty much slut shaming them. Now, first of all, they are Japanese AV idols. That's a very different culture in Japan. That is completely normal in Japan. The whole hate towards this is a cultural difference, but also people are akinning it to porn, they might not have done porn. You see, the whole AV idol term is actually really, really, really vague because a Japanese AV idol can do two types of things. They could do sexy modeling, clothed but very skimpy. They could do softcore porn modeling, which is no sex. They're just topless, naked sometimes, and they just show off their bodies and that's about it. And then there are hardcore pornographic actresses which are basically porn stars. Now, some people are just seeing this and going, oh, AV idols, immediately porno stars. Honestly, no, that might not be the case. It's like I said, in Japan, it's a cultural thing where girls pursue to just be AV idols to do sexy modeling. It's a lot of swimsuit modeling, a lot of bikini modeling, and that might just be the extent of what they've done. And honestly, what's wrong with that? It's still clothing, right? People have to model clothing, but that shouldn't be a defense or an excuse. Let's say they were pornographic actresses. So listen, I understand from a perspective of maybe your child, if they're interested in this group, might look up these girls and then stumble onto pornography. But honestly, come on. Also, Korea is super strict. You cannot look at porn in Korea. It is, you have to bend over backwards. You can't just search these girls' names and find porn. Porn is really, really heavily restricted in Korea. And so I understand the concerns of like shaping young minds and being good role models. And that's not to say being a porn star is a bad role model, but it is introducing sex a little bit too early at a young age. But I will say I don't like the negative connotations around this whole porn star image. I don't like this whole like, oh, they're gross, they're dirty, go away, go back or whatever. That's just rude. That's just straight up rude. I can understand it's like, oh, this is a little bit not my taste. You know, it's like, oh, I don't agree with their lifestyle choice. That's fine. But people are just being straight up rude to Honey Popcorn. And honestly, we have to embrace it. We can't ignore the fact of where they came from and what they've done. We have to look at Honey Popcorn objectively and embrace that that is a part of who they are. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. They did not break any laws. What they did was not morally wrong. It is a standard part of society and they provided a service in which that was totally consensual. So honestly, let's just embrace it. Let's move on because this song is a motherfucking bop. But guys, what did you think of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo by Honey Popcorn? What do you think about this whole controversy surrounding them? Let me know in the comments below. And like I said, our merch sale ends next week. So get them now while you can. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash final sale. Also, thank you to our monthly groupies. We could not do it without you guys. If you want to join the club, go to patreon.com slash form therapy for as little as $2 a month. You get early access to reaction videos and a lot more. So get that. But if you can't help us out monetarily, that's completely fine. Why don't you help us out by clicking like down below. Go ahead and click subscribe up here. Go ahead and get all our other merch down here and watch all our other videos over here.